In this video, we're looking at how modifying a reaction, such as reversing the reaction or multiplying by a coefficient or adding two reactions together, how do those modifications affect the K value or the equilibrium constant for that reaction? By the end of this video, we're going to have three rules, one for reversing, one for multiplying by a coefficient, and finally one for adding reactions together. And for each of those three, I'm going to go through an example that shows you why does that modification have the effect on the K value that it does. So let's jump into our first example here, which is what happens whenever we take a reaction and we reverse it. So let's start with this reaction. Dinitrogen tetroxide or N2O4 gas in equilibrium with two nitrogen dioxide gases. And we've got an associated K value that I'm just going to write as K. We can write that equilibrium expression. K equals NO2 concentration to the power of two because of that coefficient of two right there, divided by N2O4 concentration to the power of one because there's no coefficient before it right there. That's going to be our original reaction before we reverse it. So we're going to reverse this. Now when we do that, we're not actually changing anything about what's physically happening in a reaction. It doesn't matter how we write it. It's still the same reaction in equilibrium that it was before. But whenever we write it a different way, there's a different K value associated with the different way that we write it, which is a little bit weird to think about. But let's take a look at our reverse reaction here. So I'm just going to write the same reaction, but in reverse, two nitrogen dioxide gas in equilibrium with N2O4 gas. And I said this would have a different K value. So I'm going to write K prime. That's not a one. That's a little apostrophe. K prime it just means it's a different K value than this K over here in that original reaction. What would that new K value be though? If we know the original K value, how could we calculate this new K value? So let's take a look here. Let's write our K prime expression. So we would have N2O4 gas on the top, because that's our product now, divided by NO2 concentration to the power of two, because that's our reactant now. Now, if you take a look at these two, you'll notice something. This K prime expression is the, is the reciprocal of the original K expression. We took the products that are on the top, now they're on the bottom, and the reactants that are at the bottom are now on the top. And that should make some sense, right? We reverse the reaction, we just exchange the products and the reactants. Well, in our K expression, the products and reactants are the numerator and denominator. So all we did was switch those. So whenever you reverse a reaction, you wanna know what's the new K value for that reverse form of the reaction, all you have to do is take the numerical value of K and take the reciprocal of it. So if the K value over here was 10 to the negative fifth, you would just take one divided by 10 to the negative fifth, and that would tell you what your new K value is. Simple as that. So if you ever reverse the reaction, just take the reciprocal of the K values to find your new K value. Now, I think it's worth it to take an extra minute and remind ourselves that this is different than the delta H values back in our thermodynamics unit. For a delta H value, whenever you reverse the reaction, you didn't take the reciprocal of delta H value, right? You changed the sign because you're switching it from being exothermic to endothermic or endothermic to exothermic. But here, whenever you exchange the reactants and the products, you don't change the sign of the K value. In fact, the K value is never negative, but instead you take those reactants and products, you reverse them so you take the reciprocal of the K value. So don't get this confused with what we did with our enthalpy change or delta H in the thermal unit back then. So that's our first rule. If you reverse the reaction, take the reciprocal of the K value. Let's look at a second example that will illustrate our second rule. So what happens if you were to multiply a reaction by a coefficient? How would that affect the K value? Iodine gas plus chlorine gas in equilibrium with two ICL gas. And I've got a K value there for that reaction. And that's going to be our original. And we can write that K expression, ICL concentration to the power of two divided by I2 and Cl2 concentrations. Now let's multiply this by two and see what happens to our K value. So now we're just gonna multiply the whole reaction by two. So two iodine gas plus two chlorine gas in equilibrium with four ICL gas. And we've got a new K value, which we can see right there. I'm just gonna write K prime again, like I did last time. So let's write our new K expression based on these coefficients. So here's what we get. K prime equals ICL concentration to the power of four divided by iodine and chlorine concentrations, both to the power of two. Now here's another way that we could write this out in terms of what we originally had here. So let's take a look at this other way that we could write this. We could write this as ICL to the power of two over iodine and chlorine, that whole thing raised to the power of two. Now real quick mathematically, let's do a check here. So ICL squared squared would be the same as ICL to the power of four. Iodine squared, and we have iodine squared right there. 
and then finally chlorine squared and we have chlorine squared right there so that all checks out these are for sure equivalent to each other what i wrote there in the parentheses is our original k expression so what we could do is we could take that and substitute in for k and we'll find that this is since this is equal to k in the parentheses all of that squared is the same thing as our original k value squared so notice the pattern here when we multiplied the reaction by two what did we do to our original k value to get to our new k value well we had to square it so our k prime is our original k squared multiply the reaction by two square the k value now if we were to multiply by a different coefficient we would just raise that k value to whatever that coefficient is so if we tripled the reaction we multiplied everything by three our k value would get cubed to find our new k value so there's our second rule whenever you multiply by a number you're going to raise k to the power by which you multiplied the reaction multiply by two raise k to the power of two and so forth all right let's move on to our final example and this is what happens whenever you take two reactions and you add them together this is very similar to hess's law in thermodynamics but in hess's law you just added the delta h's but in this case we're not going to add the k values we're going to end up multiplying them but i'll show you why that is so let's start with two reactions that we'll know the k values to. Those are provided in the problem. Here's our first reaction there. And we could write our k expression, right? It's gonna be NO squared over N2O2. But let's say that we know what that value is. It's 10 to the negative fifth or whatever that k value is, we know it. Our second reaction here looks very similar, but if you take a look at it, it is a different reaction. We can write our k value for that. We'll call that k2. Now we've got a third reaction that's gonna be what we get when we add those two reactions together, similar to what we did in Hess's Law and Thermo. So we have NOs cancel out on both sides. We add everything else up. We have, we're left with N2 and two oxygens. And then on the right side, we have two nitrogen dioxide gases. And if we know our K1 value and our K2 value, like numerically what they are, could we use those to find our K3 for this third reaction? It turns out we can. So we know that K3 is going to be equal to NO2 squared over N2 and O2 squared. So I'm going to prove to you now that this K3 value is just equal to K1 times K2 which is our rule here. Whenever you add reactions, you multiply the K values together. This is gonna to show you why. So K1 times K2 would equal this. Here's K1 on the left. I just wrote out what I have up here. And I've got K2 on the right. And I just wrote out what I have for our K2 value right there. And I'm gonna cancel anything out that I can mathematically. So NO squared is gonna get canceled on both sides. I'm left with, only thing on the numerator is NO2 squared divided by N2 squared and O2 squared. That's what I get whenever I multiply K1 and K2. And if you notice, what I got for my answer there is exactly equal to what my K3 value is. I got that by multiplying K1 and K2. So this shows me that K3 of that reaction that we get whenever we added the first two is equal to the K1 and the K2 multiplied together. So here's our rule number three. When adding reactions, multiply the K values to find K for the new reaction. So those were our three rules. First thing, if you reverse the reaction, take the reciprocal of the K values. Second rule, if you multiply a reaction by a coefficient, raise the K value to the power that you multiplied by. And finally, whenever you add reactions together, multiply the K values to find the K value of the new reaction. All right, if you know those three rules, then you can calculate whatever new K value you need to, provided K values given in a problem. All right, thanks for watching.